Good morning, everybody. Um, so today's conversation is going to be about something that I want to stress, and that is I want everyone to write this down, which is can you list 30 items in four hours? This is photographing, photographing, listing, researching, everything. Um, that's the maximum amount of time. If we get through this two months together and you can't do that, then I will have failed you because that is the minimum requirement. Now, you do not have to list 30 items a day. I just want people to know how. If in a four hour period, you have extra time, something comes up, you have um, whatever situation, you have a four hour block that pops up, you get three, 30 listings done, then I believe you have the capacity to replace a six figure income with this. That would be you out there hunting four hours a day to find $300 worth of stuff. And then um, you going home, listing it all, shipping everything in four, in, in four hours. So half an hour of doing everything, half an hour of finding everything. Um, that's the minimum requirement for this. At least you have to know how. Now, of course, um, you don't have to. And the point is, the reason why I bring that up is I want people to recognize that um, you, you cannot run your full capacity. You can't set your goal of what's possible. So a lot of people say, oh, I could do 20 a day. That's my goal, 20 a day. That doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. No one ever sets their PR as their daily goal. It's too much. That would be like, if you have only two hours a day, you can't expect all two hours of the day, you're working perfectly. It's too hard. So it's got to be easy. So for tech, doing 250 listings a day is actually easy. He, he's set up to do a thousand listings a day, but 250 is just what happens when he calls it snail pace. It's not really snail pace, but it's um, the way that he has it set up. It's very, very modular. Okay, so that's the main goal. I want everyone to write down, how can I process 30 listings in four hours? And if you can't, why? Um, and that is the equivalent of a six-figure income. And that means when you go out sourcing, you need to find six to 10 items an hour that are $10 profit or more. And if you can't do that also, we need to look at, Maybe you need to source online. Maybe you need to buy lots. Um, maybe you need to expand your Rolodex so you can find more profitable items. That's the main key. Uh, let's see. If you can't get the Zoom to work, let's just talk about that off of the stream since this is recorded live. I'm trying to get people to, um, we'll work on the technical difficulties outside of this and I'll do my best to answer the emails um, that come in and I appreciate all of the emails and I, re I recommend you email me more than, um, or I'm sorry, you can email me as much as you want and I'll do the best I can to respond. And the pictures coming in, it's, it's all good because essentially I'm just gonna pull a few examples of each person. But before we get into reviewing people's um, pictures, I wanna go over a few more people's goals because that seems to be useful for people. So May, do you wanna start us off? What are you, where are you at in reselling? Where do you wanna be? Hey everyone, good morning. I'm from Hawaii. And um, so I started reselling back in August um, with the introduction of my uncle. And right now, um, under I have listed under 700, well, actually I'm 699 because a lot of people have been buying too, but um, essentially I wanna hit that Nirvana where you list five and then um, sell five and then essentially grow from there. Um, yep. I mean, overall, like everybody's goal is to have a set schedule and then the importance of like how time it, like there's a lot of things that we can't really control. So um, scheduling is very important and then taking ownership of time and then eventually leaving the corporate plantation and then making it a full time. Got you. So you're 699 now. And yes. how, many, how many items are you selling a day roughly? Um, luckily two to three every day sounds good so i want everyone to also write this number down i'm okay with half a percent sell-through rate so if you have a um a thousand items in your store and you sell five i consider that a acceptable for this mentorship but the goal would be 10. so for every 200 items i want you to sell at least one per day because if you're not doing that you're spending too much of your own money to grow the store and i don't want that i want people to organically grow and um, when I switched over to that, starting from zero, I think in the first five months, starting from zero in November, from November to April, I think I made a hundred thousand dollars starting at zero. 
you don't have to go fast. You just have to make sure that when you're starting, um, your sell through rates at least half half of a percent a day. Fifteen percent is is reasonable. And then right now, a lot of people in the group are you're spending a lot of the day repairing your old store. So let's keep in mind only the new listings you do count towards this. So you might have a 1,000 item store that's broken, but now you have a 10 a day listing habit. So after 10 days, now you have 100 good listings. Try to get one sale per day with those 100 good listings on the old 1,000 broken ones. That's a, that's Treat that separately because those ones have already been deemed, um, like they've already been, eBay's already put a dunce hat on those listings and they're, they're in the corner and they don't give the attention that they deserve. So I want people to write this number down also, which is really helped me yesterday. I was, I was looking at some software that was showing that 40% of all sales on eBay happen on the first page. So that's the first 60 listings. So even though there's tens of thousands of listings on eBay, half of the sales happen on the first page. So everyone here needs to learn how do you get onto the first page of eBay? That's getting the most relevant search, best pictures, most item specifics, decent pricing. And of course you could be, you can still get a sale if you're not on the first page, but that's in the listing quality report. It will tell you how often you rank in the top 20 searches, because I'm sure even in the first page is 40% of the sales, but I'm sure the first 20 is most of it. So we have to rank high. So. I think eventually on eBay, all of the top listings will be people in this group because we're focused on what is the customer looking for? Can we provide that and go to the top? So cool, mate. Let's talk about your current schedule. What is it right now and what could be adjusted? So I'm currently on summer break, um, awaiting um, a couple of internship um, interviews. So in the morning, um, I kind of, well, I wake up early in the morning to check, uh, check the stock market. And then from there, Wait, uh, six o'clock Kauai time is your mentorship. After this, it's Wednesday. So I'm going to head to the swap meet, um, see what they got there. I haven't been for a while. That's why. And then nine to two, bracket from nine to two in the morning. Um, I work at a, at a pharmacy as a pharmacy technician. Okay. So, but, but then my schedule varies depending on when they need me. Um, it's just, I really need that. I guess I just have to find it in like my inner core to just get the habit of list, like you said, like listing, uh, taking photos and then packing or what have you. But I, it's just finding that, that, uh, I don't know, like that inner core, like, Hey, you got to do this, you know? Yeah. So I want to eliminate that for everyone because I, I never feel like it. It's hard. I've got to wake up do this call in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. That's early. If I don't want to have a horrible day, then I need to work out before. Otherwise I don't have enough energy to get through it. Then I have to take my daughter to daycare. Then we do this call now, which I added to my already really busy schedule. None of the time I feel like it. It's, it sucks every day. It doesn't suck, but I do it every day. And it's easier to do it that way. Like I want to remove the emotional part of people's thinking because it makes it really hard because you're never going to feel like listening. So we want to have the schedule set up. So the clarity is, I was thinking about Angela. She needs to show up, know exactly what to do, do it, then go do something else. Clarity is huge. You need to know. That's why I have reset to zero the day before. My job here at the store is to make sure everything is ready for the next day. So when people get here, they don't have to do any thinking like, Where's my pencil? Where's the pen? Where's the iPad? Where's the computer? They don't have to think about any of that. They just show up, do their work and go home. I actually was thinking about it yesterday. Um, the work here could be done in six hours. If they get done in six hours, they can go home. I don't, and that's what I want everyone to think about your pharmacy technician work. You get paid by the hour. You're probably or per session. And unfortunately on eBay, it's, it's not like that. It's actually commission-based. You get more if you pay, you, get, you work more. And that makes it really hard, especially, and I'll tell you what makes it the hardest, getting a really good sale. People get a really good sale and they take their foot off the accelerator. For, for me, it's the same though. If I sell something for $100 or $2, it doesn't, 
do anything. And if and uh, earlier before the call, Chow was talking about finding some cool grails. For me, I hate grails because they take more time. I have to think about it. Oh, this is cool. Do I want to keep it? Do I want to gift it to a friend? What does it go for? I have to research it. And um, tomorrow morning, if you guys are in the group, we're going to spend the whole hour trying to reduce the researching time. I think that's that's huge. People spend a lot of time looking up the exact shirt. Like, for example, this is a Lululemon quarter zip. I'm never going to look up which one it is. I'm just going to put Lululemon men's quarter zip sweater, Heather Gray, long sleeve, done. Right. And I might list it at $39.99 instead of figuring out the exact one and listing it at $56.99. Because there's more people looking for, they might click the under $50 Lululemon and look for it. And then I think it's important to really think about reducing the research time. And again, the top five words are going to be the most important. Lululemon, men's, gray, sweater. That's like 90% of what people are searching for. So if you want your store to sell things faster, we want to focus on picking different items. So hard sourcing life, easy eBay life, easy sourcing life, hard eBay life. So if you just order all the stuff that you sell, you're going to spend all your time sorting. Um, yep. All right, May. Thank you. So actually, before we move on, what is your biggest obstacle right now? Is it just the scheduling? Scheduling. Yep. Okay. okay. So does anybody, can somebody share if, um, let me see here. I'm trying to think here. What's the best way for me to help everybody figure out their schedule? Just tell you. I think, because it could be, you just tell me all the stuff you need to get done in your life. And I'll just sit down and try to figure your life out for you. Uh, or I get, oh, actually, let me back up. So um, yesterday, somebody said they spend time away from their spouse with, their, with, with these two twins, declutter and reclutter. Not a very good joke, but decluttering is great. But recluttering is the problem. People actually keep adding things to their day or adding stuff to the process that's that, that makes it messy. And that's why, like, whenever I watch these shows where they go to somebody's house and they do everything and they come back two months later and it's messy again, that's what we're trying to avoid here. So I think defining your responsibilities is key. And then maybe I set your schedule. And then if it works, please, God, don't change it. I don't get why people do that. Um, Chad, quick question. Well, I was going to say for me with my schedule, you know, how I got to waking up at 4.30 and doing this at 5.30 yeah. was determining how long each activity took me and okay. then blocking those times and then saying, well, now I've got to fill the day. And then when I ran out of time, I said, well, what do I do? I either stay up later or get up earlier. And that's where I got to 4.30. But it was easier for me because I knew I'm going to be doing these exact things at these exact times. And the better I get at listing and all that stuff and sorting, then I just free that time, but maybe I'll wake up later. Maybe I'll list more, you know, whatever. That's awesome. Um, thank you. And I think maybe that's why I wanted to have um, everyone decide this morning that eBay is not going to take you longer than four hours. So when I started um, being an entrepreneur, because Valerie was saying yesterday, she drove um, DoorDash. When I started being an entrepreneur in 2014, I also did that. I did Uber and Lyft in the morning to make $100. The, the reason why I did that is because with $100 in your pocket already before you start being an entrepreneur, you already feel a little more at ease. It's easier than if you don't have any income coming in at all. So I would wake up, I would drive into the hills because rich people use Uber and not public transportation. I'd pick up a three or four o'clock in the morning ride. 99% of the time it was to the airport. So I could get 40 or $50 of the hundred dollars first, first ride. So you want to optimize your time. I, I'm a big fan of getting a part-time job or a full-time job so that you're not making emotional decisions and you're just being at peace. Like as an example, yesterday, um, we changed or two days ago, we changed the password in the group and it like ruined some people's day. That's our, that's my fault for not making it clear, making the password easy to find, but uh, not being able to log into something should not ruin your day. That's like level one, what could ruin your day? Like losing a family member, if that's a 10, not being able to find a, a password should not affect your day at all. 
you should have other things lined up that you can do while you're waiting for technical difficulties to come up. And if you're on eBay, for sure, there's going to be times when eBay is down. So you don't, you want to have something to do while it's down. Sorry, I'm right by Amtrak. We'll go with Stephanie. Stephanie, tell us about you. Well, um, do you want me to start from the beginning? Because I, I talked the other day. I just didn't know if you want me to. Yeah, this is. The... Sorry about the train. Just tell us about how putting together your schedule and spaces has been. OK, um, well, I, since I've had to make a schedule, I didn't make a schedule prior to, to you telling us to. So now that I have one made, I'm feeling much better about it. I'm actually getting things accomplished. I guess I just needed more or less that accountability. Um, I didn't have any before, you know, I'm at home, I get to do what I want when I want to do it. And so now it feels better. You know, I'm getting up earlier, I'm getting my exercise done, which was a big struggle for me because I'm like exercise work, kids, what to do first. So I'm actually feeling better about it since we've started this process. All right. So, yeah. Let's go with David. I know you're parked now. Tell us what's up. What are you working on? David SVA. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, right now I'm starting to get my store back up again. Um, I would go in and out of, you know, listing daily. I probably listed like two months daily last year. And all of a sudden I got all these sales every day, every day. Who knew? Um, but, uh, my past was, I basically did everything. I sold on Amazon. I sold on, I tried to, um, drop ship. I tried to do a shop of buy or whatever or something new that I saw I just would just gravitate toward because why would I do one thing and try to get good at it because that would make sense so I then started going into uh, sports cards. Um, actually, I sold electronics and stuff like that, but I hated testing everything. I hated, you know, getting different boxes and being, you know, an everything seller. Um, it, it just, it was, it sucked. So. Um, hey, David, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you because your connection is not very good. I turned off the. I turned off your um, video to try to help, but it's still not very good. So we'll go to somebody else and we'll come back to you. Um, let's see. Bethany, have you, or actually let's go with Wacy because I think he has a day job. Then Bethany next. Wacy, can you chat? Let's see. There we go. Yeah, can so, you hear me now? Yeah, tell us about you and where you're at and where you want to be. Uh, so I work full-time at the post office and I started I was just looking for something to make some extra income. Um, so through research, I and my neighbor actually, uh, she has a pretty decent sized store, and she, you know, gave me some advice to get into it. So um, I've been doing it about six weeks. Um, I got uh, two hundred and twenty some odd items listed right now, um, and yeah, luckily I came across your stuff within the first couple of weeks. So I've been you know, implementing a lot of that stuff. And I just want to get to a point where, you know, I can make a couple thousand extra dollars a month. I love it. You just skipped all the pain of everybody <laughs> trying to figure this out. I love it. So any insights from somebody who works with, what, what do you do for the post office? Um, I'm a rural carrier. So, um, yeah. So I just noticed um, I bet my neighbor, I've been picking up and I happen to live on my route too. So I, she was one of the first people that started having like a lot of packages. Like I was stopping there every day to pick up packages. And uh, then, you know, about a couple of months ago, I just asked her like what she's doing. Cause I started looking for, like, I was looking for, I was looking into like drop shipping, all that stuff. And, and so I asked her what she was doing and, and she told me, and then she actually, she picked up a, a big thing of, of Western. It's actually right here. This case is full of, old Western DVDs that she got for like $25 and she just sold it to me to get me started. So I started with that and, and, and kind of progressed from there. How do you get your, your postal carrier to um, pick up your packages with a smile? 
I don't know. I mean, I do it every day. That's what they should be doing. So, (laughs) okay, fair enough. Um, That's great. I always wonder about like the people who work at the UPS store and they see all these um, Amazon shipments going in FBA. Like, what do you sell? Or all the post office people ask me too. And I actually yesterday, this or the because I drop off my packages at the distribution center. The guy at the gate Mm -hmm. said. What, what is all this stuff? Cause I, I'm, um, and I said, I'm selling clothing, mainly jeans. And he said, Oh, I have a pair of five Oh ones. Can you help me sell them? So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, everyone, yeah. everyone understands reselling. And I, I think as a carrier or a UPS store, you would see who's, who's selling stuff. Well, I think also coming from a small town, like I see how it kind of affects our post office more like in a big town, like, sure. Like you're like, there's only 500 people in my town. So, Amy, my neighbor, is literally 50% of the post office. On oh, my, business. my goodness. So it wow. makes a huge difference. And and it's like, it's we're very appreciative of that because we're such a small town. Like, if you get too much smaller, you might go away. So it's, it's like important to our business and to our jobs. I mean, there's only five or six employees in, in this little post office. So it's, you know, her business is making a difference. And, you know, now hopefully mine will add a little bit to that, too. Uh, I'm not going to lie. The reason I picked you is because you work at the post office. And I was hoping you <laughs> some tricks because I was like, that's cool. I love it. Yeah. All right, cool. So then a couple thousand dollars. Do you have an idea of how big your store needs to be for that yet? I don't really. No worries. So I think that if you could get to a store that has a thousand items in it, that's a nice round number. Um, okay. It'll take you roughly three to six months if you just take your time with your day job. Mm-hmm. You'll make two to three thousand dollars a month on the side, and you can do that before or after your route in an hour or two. Okay. So especially since if it's a small town and you know everybody and they all know what you do, that would make it easier. Yeah. Wow, okay. Steve is in a population town of, of six hundred. Yeah, that's right. I think Belt is 560, so that's pretty close. <laughs> I love it. I can't believe the post office delivers everywhere. It's literally unbelievable. I can't believe yeah. it. Yeah, and even, like, especially out here, a lot of times UPS and FedEx, they drop stuff off at uh, for us, and then yep. we finish the deliveries. We finish the delivery. Mm-hmm. Cool. So what's, what's your biggest obstacle right now? My biggest obstacle is efficiency, which you've uh, you addressed a lot of that earlier. Um, I'm spending ever since I started listing clothes, it takes me at least four hours to list 10 items. It just takes me forever. And, and a lot of it is like trying to research like what this exact piece is. So I'm definitely going to implement some of this stuff you're talking about. Cause yeah, I'm just, and that's affecting everything. It's since I started listing clothes, I mean, I've been, I'm up to like two or three in the morning and then that throws my morning schedule out the window. And it's, it's been kind of a snowball effect the last couple of weeks. So um, I'm definitely, I just sent you that schedule and I'm getting back on, you know, my early schedule again. And, and uh, hopefully I can w- keep whittling down at this listing time. That's awesome. So, so I think let's go, we'll go back to what Chad said earlier, knowing exactly how long everything takes will help you whittle it down. Cause then you can mm-hmm. tell us how long things are taking. And I can tell you that photographs should take you under two minutes. Um, listings should take you under two minutes putting things away should take um, only a minute max. So now you're five minutes into it. So with that, it would take you 12, you could do 12 items an hour with that kind of efficiency. But if those numbers don't sound right to you, you would say, Chris is taking me six minutes to list instead of two. Then we'll go over your steps together and then we'll be able to adjust it down to the right the right method. And I still think everyone should just listen a hundred percent to tech and sports because for him, photographs is one minute and listing is 30 seconds. So you could really crush it if you decide to go that way. And every category is the same photographs list, put the item away in that order. The only exception would be in my case, which is slower, take the photos, put it away, then list, but you have to be religious about listing everything that you photographed. Otherwise, you'll be stuck with stuff that's photographed and not listed. And that is a horrible thing to do with reselling. Please, no one in the group do that. I will kick you out if you want to do it that way because it will. it's way better to do five and complete five than take 20 sets of photos and complete four. 
and have 16 mm -hmm. in a pile and never get listed or double listed or lost. Um, so thank you, Wacy. I appreciate your time and insight. And I um, think can I ask one oh, question? Like yeah, I saw a video yesterday, you mentioned uh, the cash system because I, I spend a lot of time entering every item in a spreadsheet. And I, if I, I think in this, in that video, you had mentioned something about like, you don't do any of that. You don't enter stuff in a spreadsheet. Is that true? I don't anymore. I used to, but it's not, I do accounting now by category. So I, okay. add, up all, I add up all my, per, so let's say I did $5,000 a month in sales and I went to Goodwill 10 times and each bill was a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I would just put cost of goods, 1000. That's it. I would add all those, okay. five, those five receipts together, put it away. And I do my accounting by category in the cash method. So I accrue for the cost up front, which mm -hmm. means I can't donate it and take a write off. Mm -hmm. I've already written it off when I bought it. So I don't okay. get, you don't get the double dip and do both. If you do in the spreadsheet, it's a little different and I'm not an accountant. Don't sue me. But if you do the, you buy something for a hundred dollars and then you don't subtract a hundred, then essentially you subtract the percentage of it. Like let's say there's 10 items. So it's $10 a piece. You sell something for 20, you subtract the 10 one at a time with that method in a spreadsheet, you could donate the items and take a write off for each individual item, but that's a different way than I do it. And entering things by spreadsheet is not required. You could do it that way. And I actually recommend you do that for the first hundred or first thousand items in your store, because if you do that, you will really, really, really understand eBay. Okay. So I want everyone to do at least a hundred items line by line. What'd you pay? Where'd you get it? How long did it take to sell? What are the fees? What are the shipping? How long, like you should even factor in how much you think space costs. So I guess that each item costs me 11 cents a month in space. Something to think about. You have yeah. space constraints. You also think about shipping supplies. Are you buying supplies? Do you have cute poly mailers with the cactus that cost 10 cents each? Or do you use free padded envelopes from the post office? That, that can add up. So think about mm -hmm. all your different costs, all your different time. And that's okay. gonna be huge. All right. Well, I got to get back to my route. I'll keep listening, though. All right. Thanks, Wacy. Bethany, what's up? Hi, Chris. Hi, everybody. Can you what hear me? are you working on? Where are you from? What do you do? Uh, I'm in Hawaii also. I'm in Maui. And um, I've been reselling for a long time. I actually, um, Brittany, uh, we've had a very similar life path. Like we should talk because I started out with brick and mortars as well um, about the same time as you actually. And, um, and then eventually kind of started selling on eBay too. Eventually went only online. Now I'm on eBay and Poshmark. And, um, I do cross post everything and it's kind of taken a trend where I'm selling a lot more on Poshmark than eBay over the last year. It's kind of headed slowly in that direction. And I know that's because something's amiss with my eBay store. Um, at a year, almost exactly a year ago, I was doing the best I've ever done on eBay. Um, and since then it's kind of been a slow decline. And so I'm to the point where I really want to take a look at it and figure out why. Um, I have some ideas, but I also probably need some input as well to see why that is. Okay. Yeah. A one-time offer for everyone. So everyone that's a mentor, put mentorship store review in the store, in the, in the subject title. And I will make a video with Christina review everyone's store at the same time. I'll timestamp it so that you guys can, um, you guys can look at each individual, your individual store or watch the whole thing. Um, did, did your listing consistency change in the last year? No, it's actually, I've, I have more inventory and I'm more consistent than I was a year ago. So that's, that's my concern is that um, something else is obviously missing. So I'm just trying to figure out what that is, but yeah, my, my listing is pretty consistent. I mean, it can always get more consistent. I'm, uh, but, and that's, I want to make sure that I'm accountable for that too in this group, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 a weird thing because I have significantly more inventory and less sales on eBay. So that's what I'm trying to look at. And then where do you want to go with this? You want to replace an income, extra income? No, I'm full time. I'm completely full time. I just want to increase. I I have my set, um, you know, part of our household that I pay for with what I do. 
Yep. And as of a year ago, when I was, when I hit that better point on eBay, um, I was, there was no worries about money. I had plenty of cash flow. I had plenty to put back in my business and I still, I'm still okay, but it's kind of, it's, it's now a little bit more, a little tighter than it was. So I would ideally like to get back to the number that I was at a year ago and then work up from there, which should be doable with the amount that I currently have. How many items in your store and how many are you selling a day? I have 6,000 items total, uh, but you know, listed both places right now I'm selling 28 a day, but on both platforms and only about 10 to 12 of those are on eBay. Got it. Okay, Mm -hmm. great. So we'll look at, we'll look at the store. My guess is probably pricing might be a little different because Poshmark sometimes you get a little bit more and the sharing moves you to the top of the search. Yeah. Um, which makes me wonder if, because right, I'm in the process of starting a Poshmark closet. I'm thinking about having, I think between 600 and 1000 items, you actually get the most benefit mm-hmm. of sharing yeah. a lot because mm-hmm. you can get 20, 30, 40 shares per item. Sure. Yeah. And that really, when you start getting a larger closet, it can be difficult to maintain the sell through rate because it's less shares per item. Sure. Um, so cool. So I think where were you before the, were you like 30 out of 6,000 or where were you before the decline? Um, I think my sales on eBay have dropped about 30% from a year ago. Okay. And then so number of items I'd have to, I actually do have that written down. I'd have to look number of items wise, but I'm just going off of dollar amount. It's down about 30% from a year ago on, then, on eBay specifically. And then listing goal each day. I list 50, I list 50 items per day, but I have a VA that, does the actual listings. I just get the measurements, the pictures, all that. And then she does everything else. So how do you input the information to her? Um, I use Google drive and I just have um, a spreadsheet that's got the title description and then price and weight. And then she does everything else. She's doing item specifics. Yes. And she's better than me (laughs) by far. (laughs) So I would say I would like you to be open to trying doing it without a VA. Mm-hmm. Let's do a few so that you can get your item specifics game on point because it changed my life doing it, yeah. doing it without a VA. Mm-hmm. Um, like my sell through rate tripled. So I think yeah. depending on how good you are at picking, which I'll find out, but I'm sure you're pretty good in Hawaii. You might be able to get 90, 60 to 90 sales a day with the stuff you have. Yeah. And that's very, that's very different. I think you can reach Risa or Nirvana with your current store. Okay. So we'll, we'll adjust. Um, so we'll figure out, yeah, we'll figure out why that sell through rate is slower. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go to Sam, Sam, good morning or evening. Where are you yeah, at? Are you? Uh, I'm in Kansas right now. Um, but I'm 18. I'm still in high school. I'm a junior, uh, this is finals week for me. So, uh, I'm looking to get a new schedule for summer. Uh, that'll be a big thing. Are you using your parents' account? Uh, so that's actually interesting. I was, um, I turned 18 a month ago, so I just started using my account, um, pretty much a month ago. Uh, so yeah, that's been kind of hard transferring everything over, but. So yeah. what, what, what does your day look like as a, as a young, young buck? Yeah. So, uh, I wake up at seven, uh, get ready to go to school until two fifty. but I am in a program right now that allows me to work on my business, uh, for about three hours during the day at school. Uh, and that's why I'm here right now. Uh, but then after I get home from school, usually I'll do my shipping. Uh, usually I'll put it in my car before I go to school, actually, and then get my shipping done. Uh, and then I don't really have much of a schedule after that. It's just kind of getting what I can done. Usually I try and get up 10 listings a day. And then whatever time I have left just goes towards drafts. Where do you where do you want to be with your business? Yeah, so after high school, I want to be able to make it my full-time income uh, and have a successful story that can support me. Awesome. Are you going to continue on any more education or this is going to be your thing? Uh, yeah, this is basically going to be my thing. I'm not planning on going to college. So. Okay. So I do think there is benefit in school, but not related to making money. Yeah. Related to me. So if some, I think you should somehow figure out a way to um, work under somebody who find a like i think you can make a full-time because you're so young and you're in this group i think you can figure out how to make a full-time living before or after another gig 
because if you could get some good foundations from even like uh, somebody who runs a, a plumbing business or HVAC system, you could work under an entrepreneur that would really accelerate it because you could watch how somebody, I think since you're going to be a small business owner, working in another small business owner that has like five employees or more, you'll start to see like what it takes to get to that next level. And it's, this mentorship is cute, but it's really small and short versus spending 10 hours a day with somebody. That's okay. very different. So yeah. hopefully I want you to get into, um, I'd almost say, make sure your eBay business doesn't take up more than 20, 25 hours a week. Okay. So that you can get that secondary stream. Plus um, we're going to start adding in uh, personal brand building into the mentorship to help people out with that. Because essentially what you can do is if you guys can connect two different things together, like let's say that you're a plumber and an eBay seller and you have all these contacts with plumbers that always sell their equipment. If you can connect two occupations together, your income will go up a lot. Okay. Yeah. So I want everyone to think about get your eBay to making a thousand dollars a week keep that and then add on another one and then add on another one, but don't add up. Don't do three at the same time before their thousand dollar income. So for example, I focused on eBay first, then I added Poshmark. So I was already making six figures on eBay before I started Poshmark back in the day. So that's, that's a better way to do it instead of all at the same time. I think some people get mad at me saying there's benefits to cross listing and there is, I just think you should do one at a time. All right. Great. Sam, I'm excited. You, we need some youth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm excited too. Yep. Thanks. We also have, I think, a 78 year old. Oh, so we've got the full the gauge gap. <laughs> the full gamut. And I wanted to show you guys a picture. Um, my wife's great grandma passed um, on Mother's Day. But she was 96. So I want to show you guys the picture. This is so crazy. So this is the picture of her. She's 96. She was born like nine, like 1926 or something. And my daughter, who's almost one. So that's crazy. That's a that's a can you imagine being in your 90s? That's that's what's wild. So anyway, just looking at that crazy gamut. Um, and we're all, no matter how old you are, we're all doing the same exact thing building a schedule and adjusting. Um, Yesenia says she would also still go to school and major in business or something along those lines. I would say that networking is useful, but not required. Um, I mean, when I went to college, there was people already making six figures in school and we're listening to teachers that don't necessarily do, have done that before and don't know. So different benefits. Um, okay, cool. Thank you, Sam. Let's go, Hello. Carrie. Carrie, what's up? Hi. I'm Carrie, live in South Carolina. I'm a stay at home mom. And I've been on eBay for about 10 years and I'm very part time. And I think I talked to Chris about this is my lack of motivation. Um, my main priority is really just to focus on the kids, but they are in school all day. And I like doing eBay. So um, I just really am lacking the motivation to list. I love to source, which I'm sure everybody can. <laughs> so, so when you love to source, tell me, tell me about that. Is that like a daily thing, weekly thing? Yeah. Well, ideally I would, I get up at six 30, get everybody hustled off to school by eight. And then from like eight to 10, I just, I call it my coffee enrichment time where I watch all my YouTube videos on reselling. Yep. And yep. then um, between 10 and one, I'll photograph and list. And then one to three, ideally, I would hit Goodwill okay. every day. See what so how have. often do you miss the morning getting everything ready by eight? Getting the kids out of the door to school by eight? Yeah. Are you consistent with that? <laughs> well, it's technically supposed to be 745, so I try to be. Okay. I guess, are you motivated to do that? Yes. Why? That's uh, the time they start school and it's for their benefit to be there on time. Okay. I'm just saying like, there doesn't really need to be a good reason other than that's just what you do. 
Yeah. So I would love for it to be like um, before coffee or dirt. You could you could have a um, coffee enrichment enrichment time because because that's maybe how how consistent are you with coffee enrichment time? Um, every day I do that. Yeah. See, me too. <laughs> My, my, my coffee enrichment time has been the most consistent thing I think I've ever done ever. Yeah. So um, also, I'm really curious to not drink coffee for three months or a year and see what happens that first cup of coffee. No. <laughs> All right. So what I want it to be is just something that you do. So for you, it's going to be extra income. And since you don't need to do it, it's hard. It's easier yeah. when you need to do it. So maybe being part of this group is good because you can you don't want to be the person that didn't do it. So I would just say it just needs to be something that you do. The, the, the mindset change is just like at noon every day I knock out 10 listings and I go to Goodwill. Because like um, with that hard stop of the kids actually leaving around eight, that to me is a nice stop. Get Like I had that too. Daughter yeah. gets to school. I'm free for a minute. Yeah. So that like. It just needs to be something that you add that you're you're going to be more proud of the 10 listings you put up than your trip to Goodwill. Yeah, I mean, I get I go like in cycles where like weeks and weeks and weeks, I'm just killing it and yeah. doing 10, 20 sales a day. And then I just somehow my coffee slash enrichment block just lends to me laying around doing nothing. Yeah hanging out with my dog and then I'm like, Oh, I'd rather shop. So then I go do the sourcing. And Okay. So something you said is really important and I'm going to make a whole video on this, which is the fact that you do that is why we even have jobs because, or it can even make money online because no one needs any of the stuff we're posting. Right. Completely. No one needs a used sweater. Not really. They're just, they just bored. So they're online looking for something. And that's why a lot of people do like sourcing because it's kind of a form of retail therapy. If you're bored and you go out to Goodwill, the fact that you don't know what you're going to find gives you the biggest rush versus if you went to Goodwill every day and it was this, you would never go to the Old Navy every day. No. There's not enough exciting, different, new novelty stuff built in. So I think for me, now that I know that, that the slot machine mentality of going... To make that go away, you actually need to have like no, this is going to sound so weird, no need to go shopping. It's a weird thought, but if you're just at peace, you don't need to go shopping because shopping, that release that you get from it, I don't have that anymore. I used to get really excited when I bought something. Now I don't. Now I just look at 99% of my life is just what my schedule looks like. And I think what you need to get excited about is planning um, some kind of uh, event or trip that's paid all by eBay or some kind of nice thing you can get yourself at a certain point that will keep you on track no matter what. Um, or the better way is just, that's just what you do, but temporarily to get you on the track, maybe it's like a Disney vacation. Maybe it's a, a $500 dinner with your husband. Anything like well, that, actually, that's motivating? That, I mean, that's what I do. Usually the money that I make, I just pay for vacations and we're headed to Alaska in a month. So it's exciting. I love it. Yeah. I hate helping people get, or not hate. It's just difficult to help people get motivated because it's a moving target. Sometimes this, sometimes you feel like it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes a vacation to Alaska is motivating. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. So it just has to be like your coffee. It needs to be your eBay enrichment time, personal development enrichment time. Um, I love, like, I always bring this guy up in the podcast, the tile guy um, does his day job, comes home and does eBay to, his listing is his relaxing time. And then I've also heard in the group, oh, I go to the gym for two hours to relax. And other people are like, you go to the gym for two hours to relax? I sit on the couch for two hours to relax. It's just different. So I just want to get, you can just change your mindset that that's what you do. But I think that that's, um, do you have a, what is your, did you send me pictures of your workspace? I did. Okay. We'll look at that. But I think that does everyone here, maybe, maybe throw this in the chat. Does anybody um, not like where they list? 
I don't love mine. You don't? No. I'm in the garage and it's hot here. I think if we can make the place that you list a beautiful sanctuary, it's fine. Like, I, like I'm not opposed to people going to Starbucks to get your listings done once you have the photos. Go somewhere that you actually want to list. I love the Friday coffee date that people do when they get together and do the financials of their eBay store together. That's a great way to do a local meetup that's fun and actually important and go over your numbers. I think it might evolve into that where maybe a beer, I'd rather have a beer with you guys. Mm -hmm. Talk about how the week went. Um, wait, David, get some feedback. Oh, you're just unmuted, okay. Angela doesn't like her workspace. Let's see. You hate where you list. Yeah, it's, it's this is a problem. It needs to be a um, a neutral space where you can just sit and quietly get your work done. Maybe put some headphones on, listen to some music. Um, Arwen loves his listing station. Arwen, why do you love it? Um, basically, because I've got everything I've ever wanted to have. I've got nice two nice screens i know you don't need two screens but yeah i've got i've got lights i've got my photo station just behind i think it yeah. does help that i do not have my um so where i am living now um i do not store all my stock here so yeah. i sort of pile all my listings during the day here on my right and uh, it's a sort of a reward to sort of load the car and take it to the storage unit. So I don't know, it's just sort of like two different worlds. I list here and I go and store somewhere else. So I'm really happy with where I am really. Chad, feedback? Yeah, I was gonna say uh, kind of the same. I, I love my um, setup um, because it was thought out. I didn't like start selling on eBay first and then like, what am I gonna do? I thought about the setup first before I even got knee deep in it. And plus, like I said last week, you know, having a wife to bounce ideas off of, she doesn't know everything about eBay, but she knows about organizing. So she would ask questions that I never thought of, well, where are you going to put this? Where are you going to put that? And so just having someone to go back and forth with that also helps. So saying, here's what I'm going to do. And then allowing them to critique it really helps. Yeah. I think you need to love your eBay space. It can take, it can take, it takes a lot of thought to really enjoy where you work and that's like most of it, like a comfortable chair that you love might be 80% of eBay. Because if you're just okay sitting there working, it's, and there's nothing really special or difficult about listing except for doing it. And you want l less distractions. Um, Warren Buffett calls it assiduity, where you sit your ass in a chair and do the work you're supposed to do. There's really nothing fancy about getting rich. Um, it's just, it's so interesting that that makes such a big difference. And the simpler your desk can be, the easier it will be to reach your goal. And, um, I think I looked at most of the workspaces I see just look too cluttered to be effective. It's too much mental real estate to see all that stuff and try to work. So I think maybe point your desk against the corner, just face the corner, get one plant and just relax and be at peace. Um, Let's see. Some people do go to a, a separate space, but that is an extra step and it can potentially make you um, less consistent if you have to go somewhere to do it. Um, let's go with Amber. Amber, what's up? What are you working on? Hey, um, I'm Amber. I'm from, I live in Georgia. Um, I am a full-time reseller. I have about a little over 700 listings. Um, I'm just I feel like my biggest struggle is the scheduling part. And um, I know you had mentioned earlier, not worrying when you're listing and stuff. Um, I, I try to make everything perfect. So in the middle of listing, I'm like, oh, that photo needs to be edited or, or oh, I need to find, find the exact listing of this item. And it, it stuff like that slows me down. <laughs> so just, just trying to juggle, juggle that, get my schedule and, um, figure out what what is holding me up <laughs> what's the goal and what does your day look like um so I get up about 6 30 um usually I'll I'll log in I'll 
I lately I've been trying to to like make a pile of what I'm going to live. My my other issue is I list or I sell a little bit of everything. So I feel like everything I, I list, I have to look up. So it's it could be an antique or it could be a toy or it could be a you know piece of clothing. So I'm like every item. So I feel like maybe I need to niche down and, and stop that because me just grabbing from my pile and usually I'll, I'll take all the photos, which I know you, you, I heard you say something about. Yep don't batch photos just do it all at once because that's another one of my issues is I'll batch a bunch of photos and they'll be on my phone and then you know have them get listed have them all <laughs> so can, yeah just trying to get more organized can everybody put in the chat what there's like a set of photos is for you do you take 10 at a time 20 25 55 the sets of photos because the reason why I say that is I have tested the um different methods of how to list everything and i think 10 is the maximum i could do of random things and i've done that soccer ball blender microwave um, lamp chair it's still fine as long as you do small sets of 10 come on in. water yep. um I think 10 is a nice place to be and you can take your time and research. I still think you can do 10 an hour, even if every single item is super random. Um, it's just about compartmentalizing just 10. I think that's like, um, what is, let's see. Get up. Um, for Amber, for you, what what is a listing goal? I usually try to list at least 10 a day. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I don't get 10 done. Sometimes I only get eight done. Sometimes I'll get 12 done. <laughs> but yeah, usually I try to do 12 or 10. I would rather, I would like to get that up. But I guess me selling a little bit of everything, I feel like it's it's a lot slower process. <laughs> what would you do if you were done at 8.30 in the morning? Oh, man. I it, Yeah. <laughs> if I was done at 8.30, I would probably try to you, maybe uh, draft some listings for the next day. I also have an antique booth. So, um, mm. I try to, uh, that's another, that's another thing is me picking up stuff from my antique booth and then I'll go to look it up and I'm like, well, I can get more for this online. <laughs> yeah. As the distractions and me picking up stuff from my antique booth and yeah, it's the struggle is real. <laughs> okay. That's great. They gave me a couple of ideas. Tomorrow I want to, or in the morning call, I'm going to do reducing research time. Actually, I want to do that in this call as well tomorrow. Um, so everyone think about your research time, how long it takes you to look things up. I want everyone to come up with one idea on how to research things faster. Um, the, the ultimate answer, I obviously, is list very similar things over and over again. So you don't have to do the research. But in case it is different, what is the best way you're approaching it? Is it rare stuff that requires looking it up on WorthPoint or on different auction sites? Is it stuff that it's more complicated because you need to find an exact style? Um, research is huge because this is slowing people way down. The other thing that sort of slows people way down, which I want to talk about on Friday, is sorting. So when you're deciding, should this go on my antique booth? Should this go on Poshmark? Should it go on eBay? Should I throw it away? Should I burn it? All these different decisions, right? slow you way down or do you want to list all um all tops all bottoms tops and bottoms all that stuff that people do to arrange their stuff slows them way down so i think you should just list everything one pile at a time like don't spend a half day sorting everything when you could just start in the half day you could have listed 20 of those items already so i love this idea of Sorting and researching, Amber, I think that would be huge because it's, it's different for you every day. Yes. At least sounds like it. It is. <laughs> I'm all over the place. <laughs> yeah, so we want to make it as similar as possible every day. And um, I don't know. Well, one thing I wanted to share with you guys is I don't think it's boring. I don't know why. It's not. Like, from a, as a former squirrel seller of everything, I think it's less boring. 
self doing the same thing every day. It's just like the amount of mental stress of selling everything is it's impossible. It's like people who have multiple relationships at the same time. How do you do that? How do you keep track of all the lies? It's too hard. I couldn't do it. One is already hard enough. Um, so Arwen is saying he spends a lot of time separating tops and bottoms. My setup is just a little adjustment for tops and bottoms, just a different hanger. And I just sort them all together. Tops and bottoms in the same pile. But I understand people do separate. It just takes time. Um, Kevin, appreciate you. Yeah, I don't know. I want to get people excited about getting really, really good at one thing. The only downside is I'm thinking about carrying. For her, 10, that goal is almost too easy for you. I think if you, and I think that might be one of the reasons why you're bored. It's too easy. Me carry? Yeah, you carry. Because you've got a four hour or five hour time slot. If, if you were doing 30 a day, it would be, you might be able to have, I don't know. Sometimes 10 is, is boring because it's a small. Well, I think um, I, I sometimes can push it to 15, but man, do I ever get bored doing it at that point. That's why I quit. What's the boring part? I don't know. I just. <laughs> do, you, do you listen to music or what, is, what do you listen to while you're doing it? I listen order? to a podcast when I'm listening. I got you. Does anybody else listen to anything? Do they um, silence, music, podcast? I, I, I use non-cute poly mailers. Like I bought them from um, value mailers. This makes shipping fun. I'm not going to lie. I know. It does, make it, it does make it fun. Yeah, it does make it fun. <laughs> And it does so happen to be the cactus mailer that you made. Wow, wow. <laughs> so I think if you, I, mean, I just want to get in the cactus, llama, pineapple, poly mailer business. Those sell like crazy. If I sold the llama poly mailers, I'd probably be drive a Ferrari. People love those. They're yeah. so popular. Even if you never sell anything, if you have the right poly mailers and a, a thermal printer, you're on your way. Um Music makes it more exciting. Yeah, the old calls are awesome for people who are looking for stuff to listen to. Um, we definitely have enough calls that you could listen to 24 seven. Chat is dead silence. Um, let's see. Okay, so tomorrow I want everyone to really think hard about their research time. Think about how to, how to reduce that. And then Friday for sorting. And then, hold on a second, this train. So as I rebuild my new setup, um, I'm going to build a little quiet space. I'll show you guys real quick. Excuse me real quick. So I'm taking down all the shelves, oh my God. switching to the rack system. Um, and it's pretty exciting. And these are the, these are the vintage teas that I bought. Um, there's some like really ridiculous stuff that I got, but, um, I'm excited because now the process is pretty streamlined. Each person will be doing 133 a day and all three people have the exact same job. So I think it's interesting just setting it up. So systems are all the same. The schedule is all the same. I actually have them staggered. One starts at eight, one starts at eight 30 and one starts at nine. And, um, so I get here at eight, one hour before this call. And that way I can work with people, like, like a, make sure they're all set up before I start this call. So I think everything is about setting things up, organizing. Um, let's see here. Tomorrow research, Friday. Does anybody else have any questions that I can research before I call tomorrow? Oh, good to see you again, Oh. There's another girl YouTubing at first Oh, yeah. All right. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. The reason when I was talking is I'm going to be building a new YouTube set that's soundproof. So I don't have to worry about this train. 
it's super annoying. But it's become a third character in my show. Um, and my poly mailers, I have to show them before we go. All right, ready? Just plain green ones. They were a third of a cent. So, I don't know. Because cute ones can be up to 10 cents a piece. Green is still exciting. Like, still yeah, nice to look at. It's still nice to look at. Plain white, two millimeter. That's it. <laughs> That's <all I> use. <laughs> well, no, Chad, well, here's the thing. Sometimes the off-color one is cheaper. So... A third of a cent per per um, per poly miller. Green is the um, hot color of the season. Color of money, someone said. Color of money. Um, and then one last thought: when you do buy cheaper poly millers, be careful because sometimes they're not doesn't stick well. That they're too glossy. So something to consider. Maybe there's a reason why they're on sale. Um, Steve is paying seven cents each. That's what I'm talking about. So I want you guys to save money. Um, also, my Rolo died. I didn't think that was possible for a thermal printer to break. But my, I own my second one now. So they, you can break a thermal printer from overheating. So, and it's not even hot here. It's just from, I think from use. Yeah, Joel. Um, but yeah, now I gotta go. Let's see. So this time, um, and back to scheduling. Christine gets here at 10. And that's when we make a YouTube video. Um, and then it just is much easier when people rely on you. Baby relies on me. Wife relies on me. Four employees now. You guys. Tech. Although I mostly rely on him. So there's stuff like this that's that's good. But I think last stop for you guys. It's all about your five people who influence you the most. And if you pick tech you're going to make a lot of money. It's ridiculous because he's so streamlined. It, he does so much in one day, like 12 businesses, 20 rental properties, dozens of employees still won't answer my text. I don't know how that's possible. So, I mean, he's a busy man, but everything is set up one time and it continues to go. And just like our podcast today, which records at 2 PM Pacific standard time, we've never missed one in a year and a half. It's just set up. So, um, yeah, Carrie, you're going to keep me up at night. I'm going to think about how to, how to make it so it's exciting for you. That's the tough one for me, how to make this. Ex 